So the Jump Force Season 2 DLC characters trailer just dropped and Shoto Todoroki was explosive. Pun intended. He looks like an amazing character to play as. He looks like he has a lot of tools, a lot of interesting tricks in his move set, and I hope that all of his moves are available for CAC characters. But the major question coming out of this trailer is going to be who are the remaining characters? But we did get a hint by the revelation of the different series that they're going to be coming out of. Yu Yu Hakusho, Bleach, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, and Hunter x Hunter. So knowing the series, now we can make projections about who the remaining characters are going to be. But before we get into all that, hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, enable all notifications, as I reveal to you the remaining four DLC characters for Jump Force Season 2 DLC. Now we're going to start off with Hunter x Hunter because I think we all know without a shadow of a doubt that that character is undeniably going to be Buren. And it's pretty easy. I mean his awakening is going to be his winged form. His ultimate is going to be his rage blast. He's a overpowered character in the anime and there's no reason as to why they would not make him the candidate for Hunter x Hunter. There's no other characters that would have priority over him at all. Now, moving on to Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho has plenty of candidates. Now everyone is hedging their bet on Hiei, but I have to deny that. Now I, I'm looking at the potential moveset. I mean, you got Dragon of the Darkness Flame as the ultimate, probably some other like his flamethrower move from the show as like one of his super attacks. And maybe his awakening would be his Jigon Eye, you know, the green form that he used like one or two times. But I would have to contest that uh, Hiei is not gonna be in the game. I have to call that because at least not in this DLC because we already have one flame guy, one fire representative. I don't think they're going to give us two fire guys in one DLC. Plus, I mean, you would really have to reach into his like Jigon eye form to really make out a move set. You would have another sword guy on your hands too because he mostly fought with a sword. So, I mean, there's a lot of uh, reasons as to why he would not be the one. Now, the next candidate that I've seen a lot of people make a lot of fuss about is Kurabara. Why do you want Kurabara? Like, you guys have been complaining about CAC having energy sword this entire time, and you want the main character from Yu Yu Hakusho that used an energy sword. You really want that. You, you really want Kurabara. Now, I like him, in the, I like him as a character in the show, I like him as a character in the show, but for Jump Force, uh, I, I, if, I, if he if he missed the base game, uh, and then on top of that, like if they if they had introduced him when CAC did get the energy sword, it would have made sense. But now it's so far removed. I just don't. I no, no. But one character that I do see them adding from this series. And it's for more reasons than one would be Botan. Botan is a character that could be, you know, a tricky type of character, sort of like the Yu-Gi-Oh characters, because they would have to get a lot more creative, and she would be as straightforward as either Hige or Kuramara. Plus, they need a female representative, and she would be a great start. Now, we're going to be moving over to Bleach, and a lot of people are going with Yakuya or Iryu. And those are some great choices, don't get me wrong. Like, I can definitely see them adding those two characters. I would hedge over to Uryu because we do need, like, an arrow archer type character in the game, and that would be interesting. It would be a purely ranged character, and I think it would add something like a new dynamic to Jump Force overall. Byakuya would be a cool character, but I mean, he would just be another sword slash character, and then his awakening would be, of course, the the blossoms and everything so I mean ugh, I mean uh, but I think the real characters that we need to focus on getting added from Bleach are as follows now Orihime would be a awesome character to have in Jump Force I mean you can have another healing ability type of character in the game I mean that one guy rocking the blue suit with the chains is just not enough like he's the only one that has healing properties in this game so Orihime would continue to fill a much needed niche in Jump Force by giving that little area variety. Now, the next character that I could see as a female representative from Bleach is without a doubt the ever so beautiful and powerful empowered woman, 
Grand Giku. And you can even have her humanoid Bankai as like a special, like I know it's filler, but like a special nod to that little arc of Bleach in celebration of it coming back. Like yeah, have her be like the awakening for the form. And I think that would be a great Heineko and Rangiku, like you would have two characters in one. Like I can see the awakening work working like a puppet style awakening where you get like Rangiku doing the slashes and maybe uh, Heineko out in the front doing like puppeteer stuff and fighting for her. That would be awesome. Like I can see them getting really creative with Rangiku, which is why I think she's perfect for this position. Now Moving on to finally, I think the biggest part that everyone has their mindset on is the JoJo Bizarre Adventure characters. And I mean, everyone is going between Jirono and Josuke. And I, I can see why they're the most recent JoJo's characters and arguably the most important characters. I mean, we, we're, we've just wrapped up Golden Wind and we haven't really seen Johnny Joestar yet from Steel Ball Run. So I can see why people are going to, you know, hedge their bets between Giorno and Josuke. But I think it's a problem here that both of these characters aren't really offensive characters, if you get what I mean. Like, both of these characters are strictly support type characters, like they have like restorative or healing properties to their moves, and I mean they don't really feel the same niche that Orihime would feel in being like a pure dedicated healer type character. They, it's like they're caught in that strange mid ground. Like, yeah, they would. I mean, we already have enough stand characters. This is what I'm getting at. Like, JoJo's has more to offer than just stands. Did everyone just forget about Hamon? Did everyone just forget about that? Like, really? Now, the picks that I've come up with here that don't involve Giorno or Josuke, and let me just say, I would not mind them being in the game. There's no nothing wrong with them. I just think that we, we've got, like, an overabundance of stands. An overabundance of that sort of thing. But the other characters that I could see them adding would be, of course, Old Man Joseph. This is the first pick that I've come up with. Old Man Joseph would be a comedic add to the game. He would be a, more so of a comic relief. Now he can be competitive if they make him the right way, but he could be like a comedy relief character with his whole, oh my God, like I would I would love it if he did an ultimate technique in the game and he just finished it off with like, oh my God, something of that nature. It would be awesome. Just have him in his complete get up, the, the, goddamn Indiana Jones hat the whole joint I think that would be awesome for the game have him use hermit purple as like a whip technique like his melee combos would just be him whipping people with hermit purple with a combo of hormone and all that I think that would be great and maybe his ultimate could be sunlight overdrive or some form of that and I think it would be perfect. I think he would be a perfect character to represent Jojo's and he would you know pair perfectly with Jotaro now if you want to go even younger, and if you want to go serious, of course you could go young Joseph if you want a serious pick. And again, he would still use Homon, just obviously nothing to do with uh, Hermit Purple. But I think he would be a, a solid add too. Like everyone loves Joseph Joestar, young, old, whatever. And I think he would be a great pick either way. Now, if you want to go obscure, like I could, I think you could add Avdol. You know, Polnareff, you could go you could go with Polnareff too. Like those would be some like off-brand picks, but you know, I think they would still be welcome. Or for female representation, you would go with Lisa Lisa. If you wanted the master, the peak of hormone. You have to go with Lisa Lisa as the female representative of the JoJo's roster. I mean, we gotta have one. We have got to have one. Now, some honorable mentions from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. I think you could also stand to get away with adding cars. Uh, cars being the ultimate perfect being. And it would be interesting to see his dialogue with Cell. Because both of them are the perfect beings. Of course, I'm talking about his form after he takes the Red Stone of Asia. Uh, I think that would be a uh, interesting uh, interactions with Cell, and of course you would have Uriam coming in the game too. So although you can have the literally the perfect team if you had Cars, Uriam, and Cell all on one team. So I mean, it would be a lot of reasons to add that character. Another character that I can see the most definitely adding to Jump Force 
is the ever so powerful and beautiful Holly Cujo and her stand Star Palladium. Star Palladium and Holly Cujo coming into Jump Force would just be something that would be beautiful. I think everyone would enjoy this character coming into the game and she's a fan favorite. I mean, I can just imagine her doing the ultimate and just finishing it off with, okay, just bam, just ending a, a, a man's entire career. So, those have been my picks for the Season 2 DLC characters for Jump Force. What do you think? Did I hit the mark on all these characters? Did I miss anyone that you would think would be an admirable pick? Let me know in the comment section below and you may see it in a future video. Of course, I've been the number one anime gaming Dragon Ball Xenoverse JoJo's Bizarre Adventures and My Hero Academia Jump Force channel on YouTube and the internet. Of course, the quality is in the name itself perfection. I will see you guys in the next video don't forget to join the discord server for all things gaming and anime and empowered women discussions of course i will leave the link down in the comment section below i'm also putting a, together a naruto shinobi strikers team so i do need some of you guys to come on in we can communicate we can set up times to play the game there's all sorts of things to do in the perfections pantheon server and i will see you guys in the next video peace